Today, I'm gonna show you six of the weirdest Nintendo Switch accessories in our collection. Welcome to It Came From A Box, this is Sergio AM, and since the launch of the Switch, we've bought and tested hundreds, yes, hundreds of Nintendo Switch accessories. So much so that we even have a two hour video featuring all of them. But today, we're taking a look at six of the weirdest ones we've never shown you. If you find the screen on the Switch to be too small, well, you can of course just, you know, use it with the dock on a big TV. Uh, but if you want a larger screen in handheld mode, we found an inexpensive way to fix that. This is the Max Screen Magnifier by Qua Quamba. Camba? Anyways, uh, it's a large plastic Fresnel lens that magnifies the screen on the Switch. It's made up of two parts. The first is this clip for the console, which has soft padding throughout the inside, along with some rubber for grip. Over on the back, it has a small, fragile, adjustable kickstand. Or is it fragile? The second part is the lens, which is attached to this arm, that's also softly padded to protect the lens from scratching. One awesome thing here is that the clip is compatible with both the Switch and Switch Lite, as well as your phone. So, you attach the console, then connect this arm into that clip and flip down the magnifying lens. You don't have to worry about positioning because that arm and hinge makes it so it's always in the correct viewing distance and angle from the console. In use, it actually works pretty well and we specifically love it for the Switch Lite. It blows up the image by two to four times the size which is great for games with a lot of tiny details or very small text. But, same as sizing up a JPEG, it does nothing to improve the quality of those graphics. Now, two things to note, if there's any kind of lighting around it, it may show up on the edges of the lens as glare, which can be annoying, so the darker, the better. On top of that, the lens also produces a bit of visual distortion and blurriness if your head, if your eyes are not positioned correctly. And yeah, uh, at first I came into this laughing at the gimmicky idea of it, but after using it, uh, it sort of surprised us and was actually a very fun gadget to use. So it's weird, but it does what it says, and if that's not enough to convince you, it also comes with a luxuriously soft pouch so you can take it on the go. Have you ever played the Switch in public and thought, I need some privacy here? Me neither, but if you ever do, try out Bon Fuchs Sunshade. This is how it looks, just three good quality, durable, rigid flaps of whatever material this is, and they're held together by magnets. Bon Fook. So you remove the Joy-Cons, and they go right along the sides here, but just make sure it doesn't cover the screen, and well, there it is. So although they call it a sunshade, which they'd like you to think is to help avoid glare when playing outdoors, and yes, it does do that, but let's be honest. This is so you can peacefully play those games that you just don't want others to see you playing. Speaking of privacy, uh, a while back we covered the NS glasses, which fits perfectly in this list and had this to say about. If you want 3D, then check out the NS glasses by Xclim. Raising over $90,000, this headset claims to add an immersive 3D experience to the Switch. Taking a look around, as you can see, it's pretty big, but it's also lightweight and well-made. On the back, we have a soft, breathable cushion for your face, but it's not large enough to fit with glasses on, unless they're really small. Next, we have a Velcro adjustable headband, very elastic-y to suit small to massive heads. Now over to the front, we have the tray for the Switch. Very simple design, it snaps in at the top and the switch connects to the pegs at the bottom and the edges are covered in this soft foam to protect the screen. Once in there, you still have access to all the ports in IO, so yes, you can play while charging with headphones on, but if not, don't worry, there's also clearance for the speakers. All right, so wearing it is pretty comfortable, but about 30 minutes in and the additional weight from the switch did become uncomfortable. So to avoid that, you can use them laying down so it sits above your head in a balanced way or staring down at them. But you can also use it with the Joy-Cons attached to hold up some of the weight. In practice, it looks hilariously awkward, but then again, uh, so does any headset, to be honest. Now, the 3D effect is created by an Infinity Stone. No, no, it's not. It's actually created by a single lens. 
Uh, that means there's no electronics that can break or batteries that need charging, and you don't have to adjust focus. Now, the experience is difficult to show on camera, but it's like a poor man's Ready Player One headset. It feels like you're inside a corridor staring at a huge screen and the lens in there creates this slight rounded distortion with a subtle 3D effect. So at least for us, yes, it works. It makes games like Breath of the Wild or Dark Souls feel even more epic and it gets rid of distractions so you can focus. All of this at the cost of looking very odd. Another one that's made the rounds over the last few years is A-Class's Easy Empty-Handed Stand, or at least that's what it translated into. To keep it simple, it's a neck strap with a mount for the Switch. Yeah. The mount is padded to prevent scratches, and it extends pretty far so you may be able to use it with other devices. Once you have it in position, this clamp locks it into place, and I'm glad they made it so the arms don't block any buttons, ports, or vents. It then attaches to the arm with an adjustable ball joint so you can position it in whatever angle you want. So you can use this on a flat surface and probably a lot of other places by wrapping it around things, but clearly it's meant to be worn around your neck. So not only is it awkward in the way it looks, but it's also awkward to use. This cushion on the back, it's not that comfortable. And although the arm is pretty flexible, it never felt perfectly in place. It's either crooked, lower than we'd like, or just way too close to our face. But if you can get past that, there's definitely something hilariously convenient here. I say that because an hour or two with handheld on the switch, my hands will start to cramp in this painful way. But with this, you can detach the Joy-Cons and play with your arms down your sides in this incredibly odd way. But um, yeah, it works. Now, don't ask me why, but we also have an alternative that we found. This is the Squid Personal Gaming Stand. It's pretty much the same thing, but with different parts. Instead of just padding, this one comes with a soft neck pillow an easier to adjust flexible arm, and it attaches magnetically to their mount that oddly can only grab the switch vertically, not horizontally, it's just, it's too big. So not sure what the thought process was here, especially considering that this was specifically made for the switch. So yeah, there it is. I have two of these things and I don't know how to explain that to my wife. One of the best features of the Joy-Cons is the long 20 hour rechargeable battery life. So it makes perfect sense for Nintendo to release these battery pack grips to make them immortal. These came out around the same time as ARMS, which is known for its flailing motion controls. And they're sort of a companion accessory because they provide a better grip than just the Joy-Con by themselves. So they slide right on and safely lock in place with this latch at the top. On the side, we have the same SL and SR buttons, and then we have a lightly textured back, which is also the battery cover. Yeah, sadly, these aren't rechargeable. They run off of two AA's each, which are included, and that then gives us easily over 80 hours of battery life, but make sure to remove the Joy-Cons when you're not using it, because if you leave them on, they'll continue to charge until the batteries are depleted. And finally, because you don't want these flying at your TV, they also have wrist straps. In hand, they feel gigantic. They're three times bigger than a normal Joy-Con, which as someone with big hands, I did find comfortable. But if you have smaller hands, these can come off as bulky, uh, especially with the added weight from the batteries. One thing I will give them credit for is that in a punching grip, they work well. And when used individually, I'd say it feels better than the straps that come with the Joy-Cons. But yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, it would have been great if these didn't attach to the rails on the Joy-Cons and instead attach to the back of them so you could still use these in handheld mode because then they'd actually be pretty decent. This next one, I'm sure you've seen them around. These are Joy-Con knife grips. We ordered these way back in 2018 from Etsy and the box just got lost because I, there was no way I was gonna review that thing. But as the seller puts it, you may ask why, but you should be asking why not. So each is made up of two parts. The grip, which is a very odd shape and is 3D printed, hence all these lines throughout. Would have been nice if, you know, they, they sanded it down like a normal 3D printed product, but I guess in their defense, it does help keep your grip. The Joy-Con drops right in, but more on that in a bit. The second part is the Rambo style blade that should fit in this slot with a lot of pressure. See, there you go. 
back to the Joy-Con. Like I said, it drops in place because it's a bit larger than the controller, but that also means it falls right out. A marvel in engineering. On the back, we have two openings, one at the top for the trigger button, which sort of works, and one below, which I can only guess is to help eject it, even though you don't really need it, it just falls right out, so I don't know. But the bigger problem here is, you may have noticed, there's no way to access the shoulder button at the top. Genius. As for the knife, it's not sharp to the touch, but you can definitely stab someone with it. I mean, that is terrifying. Anyways, in use, it's just as bad as you can imagine. It fits awkwardly in your hand, the Z buttons are difficult to use, and the shoulder buttons are literally impossible to use. But it's by far the most intimidating way to play the Switch. And that's the list. We've sat on these for years. Literally, we've been storing them for that long, and I'm so glad I found a way to share them with you guys. So now I hand it off to you. Let me know what you think of these and tell me what you believe is the weirdest Nintendo Switch accessory out there. Also, if you want to support us, because yes, we spend money on these so you don't have to, please check out the affiliate links down in the description below for other non-weird products. And for those who are going to of course ask, who are you to call these weird when you're the guy who has a channel dedicated to gaming accessories? And you're right. Once again, this is Sergio AM, and I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio AM, and I'll see you for the next box.